Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, The Power of Faith. Minister Joseph Wanene teaches how faith carries us over hard times. Praise God. Praise God. It's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord and to share the word of God today. I don't take it for granted to stand before you and share the great news of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm so happy to see Dad back in the house. We missed you so much. You. And we prayed for you. you. And God answered the prayer. So today, it's a good Sunday, and I want to share the word from the book of Hebrews. And my title is The Power of Faith. You know, when I say faith, people just, it's a normal word, but faith has power. Faith carries a lot of power. And the Bible says, without faith, you cannot please God. And I want to start this by my personal story. When my dad died, he didn't leave anything for me. He didn't leave any property for me, nothing. And I was five years old. But he left me with words of faith. Amen. And the words of faith, they have carried me until now. His last words was, son, God will take care of you. He didn't give me anything. He left me with words of faith. Amen. So faith has power. And I started reading in the book of Hebrews 1, 11, 1. It's a common verse everyone knows. But already the Bible says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Let me read it again. Say, now, now faith is a confidence in what we hope for. The confidence of what you hope for, that's faith. And assurance about what we do not see. Now the assurance... That something is coming that you cannot see. That's faith. So just having an assurance of something that you don't even imagine in your life will happen. That's faith. An assurance of something. And most of the time when, when we think about faith, people think faith, statements of faith as words of, uh, you call them, words of encouragement. People think they are motivation uh, words, but they are not. Faith, you speak something that you can, even your mind cannot comprehend. When I finished my high school, I didn't, go to, I didn't have a chance to go to university, but I had faith. I told one of my friends, I'll study, but not in Kenya. I didn't know how. I didn't even have a passport, but I had faith. I told him, I'll study but not in Kenya. And the Lord opened a door. Now I studied here. I have a degree and I have a master's. Why? Because of faith. I didn't have money. I didn't have connection, but I, have, I had faith. So faith is assurance of something to come that you don't even know how it will come. That's faith. And when I'm talking about faith, faith has no limitation. Faith has no limitation. Why? Because God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. Amen. It's about you to have faith yeah. and to stand by the word. Amen. When you stand by the word, the Bible says, I'm watching my word to bring it to accomplishment. So the Lord is watching his word to bring into accomplishment. So for you is to take the word and stand by the word by faith. And when, the, when you stand by the word by faith, God is watching and he will come to bring it to accomplishment. So faith has no limitation. Faith has no limitation. Yeah. You can believe God for anything, anytime. You don't, have, you don't have to have an idea how it will happen for you to have faith. So if you have an idea how it will happen, that's not faith. You have to believe God. If you are sick, God will heal me. Either he will use the doctors or he will heal me himself. But I know God will heal me. I will not die with this disease. Faith. You stand and you say, God will heal me. The Bible says, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. For you us is to stand and wait and see the salvation of the Lord. You stand by faith. You stand by faith. Faith is the currency we use as believers. Amen. And when you use faith, when you stand by faith, you give God a platform to perform his power. When you stand by faith, now you're putting God into a test. He has to perform. 
Why? Because you are standing by faith and you are standing by his words. So faith has no limitation. Faith has no limitation. Whatever you want in life, just have faith. Just speak it. Just speak it. Just speak it. And when I came to this country, and dad knows this, I've been saying no folk for Jesus. I was not born here. I don't know how. But I know one day, no folk will bow to Jesus. How? I have faith. I have faith. And the Bible says, ask for nations and I'll give you. I'm just asking for a city, not a nation. He'll give it to me. Why? I have faith. So for you is to know what you want and you ask and you stand by it. And you remind God, your word says, your word says, Lord, and I'm standing by your word. And you bring it to accomplishment. Just stand by the word. You bring it to accomplishment by faith. By faith. With faith you can achieve anything in this world. With faith you can achieve anything in this world. And I declared in my life, I will never fail. When I say that, people say you're arrogant. No. I know the Bible. And I'm standing by faith. I'm the son of the king. I may fail, but God will lift me up. I'll never be down there. Why? I know my God. You know your God at a personal level. You know God will take me through this. It's not what people are saying. It's what the Bible says. You stand by faith. Nothing shakes you. When the Bible says in Philippians 4.19, it says, And my God will supply all that I need. It doesn't say, it doesn't say and my God will supply all that I want. Because there's a difference between needs and wants. He says, and my God will supply all that I need. You need joy. You need health. You need happiness. You need money. He will supply all that you need. You ask is to stand by faith. And Joshua, the Lord said, Joshua, this book of the law should not depart from you. Meditate it day and night. So when you meditate the word of God day and night, you build your faith. It comes part of you. You start living the word. And when you start living the word, you start seeing the results of the world in your life. No, faith has no limitation. So nothing should limit you. You ask is to believe and to stand by the word. Faith is not a respect of time. Faith is not a respect of time. It's not, a ma- it's not a matter of how long have you been waiting for. It's how long have you been holding on your faith for. Sarah waited for so long. He waited for so long. But Abraham had faith. Faith is not about time. Sometimes we think delay is denial. No, it's not. It's not a respect of time. It's not about how long you've been waiting for. It's how long you're willing to hold on on your faith. Because surely God will come to do it at his right time. And God is never late. God is never late. He'll do it at his time. So for you is to wait on the Lord. And the Bible says, those who wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Why does he say, those who wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength? Why should your strength be renewed when you're waiting? Because waiting is painful. When you wait, there are so many things going on in your mind. You see, people, their lives are being changed, but yours is not. But when God comes, he renews your strength and he performs. So wait on the Lord. Hold on to that word. Faith has no respect of time. At the right time, God will do it. At the right time, God will do it. Just hold it. Hold on your faith. And faith should go beyond us. Faith should go beyond you. Faith should go beyond me. Faith should go beyond us. 
What do I mean? Faith should be passed like an inheritance from you to your generation. And I'll read the book of Timothy. Timothy, Tim, 2 Timothy 5, 1 and 5. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and now your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you. This is Paul saying. He's saying, I'm reminded of, of this faith. It first lived in your grandmother Lois. And now I'm seeing, seeing the same faith. I saw the same faith in your mother Eunice. And the same faith, I'm persuaded it lives in you. So faith is something you need to pass to your generation. You pass it to your generation. So one day, your son has the same faith you had before. Even when you're gone, they have the faith in them. And you see, Isaac is about to die. He calls his two sons to bless them. He doesn't give them anything. He says, by faith, Isaac blessed his son. So faith is something that needs to go beyond us. The faith we carry, we need to pass it to our grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm saying this, I was talking to my grandmother one day when I was here. And when I was talking to her, the way she was talking, she had a lot, a lot of faith in her. And I knew the faith I'm carrying, it came from this woman. Because she has a lot of faith. She believes God for anything. And she's all, almost 90s. And she still has faith. Now I knew the faith that I carry comes from my grandmother. So the faith you carry, make sure you transfer the faith to your kids, to the next generation, so they can have the faith to stand the hard times. Because times are coming which they will be very hard. When they don't have faith and they have money, they will still be in problem. But when they have faith, faith will carry them through. Faith will carry them through. That's why Paul is saying, I saw this faith in your grandmother, Lois. Now, and I saw the faith in your mother Eunice. And now I'm persuaded the faith lives in you. May you, the faith you carry, may you give it, back, give it to your next generation. May they carry the same faith you have, the same courage to face life you have, the faith of God. And when they carry the faith of God, life will be easy for them. So by faith, Isaac blessed his children. And I want to read the book of Hebrews 11, 27 as I finish. It says, by faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He preserved because he saw him who is invisible. Faith is seeing who is invisible. Faith is seeing the invisible when people cannot see it. The, the Bible is talking about Moses. Moses was raised in the king's palace. And now he gets to an age, he kills an, an Egyptian, and he runs away. But Moses was able to move from the king's palace to, his, to Jethro. Why? Because of faith. He saw the invisible. Faith is seeing where people cannot see. When you're in a difficult situation, you see the end, not where you are. And the book of Isaiah says, declaring the end from the beginning. You declare your end from the beginning. You may be suffering right now, but you see the invisible. You declare the end from the beginning. You may be sick right now, but you declare, I'll be healed. It's not the situation you are. It's where you're going. You declare the end from the beginning. Seeing the invisible. Where people cannot see, you see the invisible. And the invisible is God. You see God in all situations by faith. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are thrown into the fire. And they say, even if it doesn't come to save us, we still not bow. Why? Because they had faith. They knew God will show up. Why? Because the Bible says, we are two, two or three are gathered in my name. I'll be there. They knew we are going to be gathered in the fire by his name. So he'll show up. By faith. You see the invisible. 
You don't see what people are seeing. People are seeing hard times. You see good times coming. Why? Because you see the invisible. Your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Your eyes are fixed on the Lord, not the situation. That's faith. Faith. Because the world we are living in right now is full of so many things. It's full of challenges. It's full of diseases. It's full of everything. So for us to move forward, we have to have faith. And faith is not a noun. Faith is a verb. It's a doing word. So for us to see tomorrow, for us to live a better life, we have to see the invisible. So always fix your eyes on Jesus, not what's going on, because he's the author and perfection of our faith. So today I pray, may your faith never fail in Jesus' name. May God give you faith in all circumstances. May God give you faith to carry you through everything. No matter how long you have been waiting for, remember faith is not a respect of time. It will come to happen. Just hold on to your faith. Hold on to that word of God and remind God his own word. Because when you remind him his own word, he'll come to accomplish it. But the Bible says, I'm watching my word to bring it to accomplishment. Just stand by faith. Stand on your faith. Stand by your faith. Get that word. Grab it. Let it be your word personally. Why? Because you know your God. And how do you know your God? By faith. We come to church and worship the God we have never seen. Why? We worship him by faith. We know he lives. We pray by faith. So let us increase our faith. And Jesus was in the temple. And this, this guy is brought through the, the rooftop. The Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, just seeing the faith, he healed the man. So he's just waiting, waiting to see your faith, your level of faith. So I don't know what, what you, you've been expecting God to do all these years. Your biggest prayer. Today I want to challenge you. Just increase your faith. Increase your faith. Don't talk as if you're being defeated. Talk as if you're winning it. Yeah. Even if you're feeling... I'm almost done. Just talk faith. Just talk faith. Let your speech be full of faith. Let your words be full of faith. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let your speech be full of faith. I may not have anything, but I know my God shall supply, and he's supplying all that I need according to his riches, not according to the economy, according to his riches. Just stand by faith. Let your words be words of faith. You may be sick for so many years, but just believe this disease will not kill me. Lord will heal me. I don't know when, but I know he will heal me because he says by stripes you are healed. Just stand by faith. It's not, um, it's not about how many years you've been afflicted. Just stand by faith. And God will surely do it. Yeah. Me being here today is a result of faith. Faith has brought me a long way. And faith will take me a long way. I've, when I finished my high school... Uh, my my dad came with a suitcase. He had come from South Africa from preaching. And he brought a suitcase in the house. And he put the suitcase in the living room. And he said, if any one of you wants to travel overseas, be pushing the, be, be pushing the suitcase in the morning and in the evening, pretending you're going to the airport. And I thought this is crazy. So I waited when everyone is not there. I used to get a suitcase every morning when everyone is gone and evening. And I was pretending I'm going to the airport. I was doing that by faith. And finally, I came to the United States by faith. By faith. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a passport. 
I didn't know how people get here. I didn't know where the, 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 the embassy of Kenya, U.S., was in Kenya. But by faith, I was just getting the suitcase in the morning, and I was pretending I'm going to the airport. I was going to the airport every day. And one day, God came and did it. So by faith, whatever you want, just take. Sometimes it looks crazy. People may not understand you. But just take steps of faith and do it. God will do it. You may be sick and you say, God will heal me. People are saying, this is stage four cancer. You say, that's fine, but I know my God. My God is a healer. He will do it. They say, you'll die with this. No, I cannot die with this. Why? Because I know my God is a healer. Just take steps of faith. You may be debt. And you say, God will provide me. I'll come out of this situation. They, say, they ask, how? You don't have a job. It's fine. I don't have a job. But I know my God is supplying all that I need. Just stand by faith. Sometimes it looks crazy. Sometimes people may not understand you. When I was pulling this suitcase, I was doing it by myself. Because I knew if they saw me, they would start laughing. But I was doing it in the secret. But the Lord was watching the secret. He was seeing my faith. And he said, this boy has a faith. And now I have to do it. And he did it for me. Just stand by faith. Whatever you want, it's a matter of faith. Where you are, where you want to go, is just faith. Just increase your faith. Increase your faith. And God will do it. Thank you so much. God bless you. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.